Okay, welcome to another episode of Exploring Modular Sense, the Beginner's Mind series. What we're going to do in this video is look at envelopes and how envelopes can be used both to control the shape of amplitude when you're using an envelope to control a VCA or voltage controlled amplifier. And we're going to use the Optimix for that function and how envelopes can be used to control the shape of a filter. So one of the things that confused me when I started off using synths, which was not very long ago, was how a lot of synths would have two envelopes. They'd have an envelope for the amp, and they'd have, have an envelope for the filter. And it took me a while to figure out why that was the case and what those are doing. And actually, you can use the envelope for the filter and for the amp in similar ways for similar effects to control the onset and release of a sound, but they sound different. You can also send an envelope to your amp and send an envelope to your filter, both together. So in order to do this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use peaks first and then maths as our envelope generator. Peaks has a full ADSR envelope, and if you watched Beginner's Mind episode zero, you'll know that means attack, decay, sustain, release, and that controls uh, the, the shape of the envelope. <laughs> how quickly the sound uh, comes to its maximum volume, that's attack, how quickly it decays to a sustain level, at what level it sustains, and then how long the release uh, comes off. Um, so first of all, let's just look at the filter itself. So if we take an oscillator and we put that output into the filter, let's use the boogie filter. Actually, um, and then if we take the output from that filter and we send it to our monitors, we're going to get sound. And the sound's going to come in based on where this frequency knob is. Fully open, fully closed. This is a low-pass filter, so as I'm opening it up, it's allowing in more high frequencies. Now what if I wanted to have this knob turned automatically? Well, I could use a low frequency oscillator from my Batumi here, take a sine wave and pass it into this CV. It's gonna open and close that. This is an attenuator which allows me to decrease the amount of signal coming in, the amplitude of the sine wave coming in. So I could open up the frequency. I could attenuate that sine wave. I could also send a square wave. continuously slowly opening up and closing it in a continuous form because that's the shape of a sine wave slowly rising and falling a square wave suddenly opens it leaves it open and then suddenly turns it off because a square wave looks like that it's just a rising voltage suddenly turns off turns it off so now if we see that we notice that by using a square wave or a sine wave We're almost using the filter like an amp. We're opening and closing that. For example, imagine if we took our output, instead of sending it to our filter, to a voltage-controlled amplifier rather than a filter. So we send the signal into our Optimix. Um, we take the output from our Optimix. send the square wave to the control of the Optimix. It's having a similar effect. We can speed it up. Again, let's go back to the filter. Take the output out of the filter. Send our control into the filter. 
Okay. Now, we're not yet using an, an, uh, an envelope generator to change the, the nature of that, to give us more control about how that sound comes in and out. So instead of sending the square wave directly into the CV here, let's send that to the trigger input of peaks. And if I do that, now, I don't know if you can see that, peaks is flashing with each input. What this is, means is that every time it's getting that square wave, it's triggering the envelope. It takes that square wave and it generates an envelope every time it receives that. And the shape of that envelope will be based on these knobs, A, D, S, R. So we take the output of peaks and we send that envelope into the control input of our filter. Now what if we did that, let's go back to the VCA and hear what that sounds like with the VCA. So now we're feeding the envelope generator into the control input of the VCA instead of the filter and listening to the output of that. Now we can still control the ADSR. What we don't get is the nice filter squelch sound. So we get a kind of more interesting sound coming from the filter. Okay, now let's uh, use maths instead. Um, so we're gonna, maths has a simpler envelope generator. It's got a, simply a rise and fall knob on channels one and four. It also has a trigger input, just like peak. So if we send that square wave that we're using the LFO to, to do our trigger, and we see instead of peaks flashing, we're seeing maths flashing now with the rate of that. And we take the output of channel one, feed that into the filter. As I increase the fall rate, it's increasing the release. As I increase the, the rise, or the attack, what was attack here, it gets rid of that snap at the beginning, that click. What if I wanted to slowly automate this rise and fall? Well, I could send another CV, a slower sine wave, to slowly modulate that. But I don't want the full arc of the sine wave, the full amplitude. I want to attenuate that because I just want to, I don't want this move, this knob to be swinging back and forth. I only want it to be moving slightly from where I set it. So I can use maths again there because it has attenuverters. Put that into channel two. Set channel 2 so that it's attenuating the amplitude of that sine wave, meaning making that sine wave smaller. Take that output of 2 and send that into the fall, controlling the fall knob there. And let's hear what that sounds like.
Okay, so that's um, a basic uh, tutorial on how to use envelopes with filters and showing how we can have envelopes with filters and envelopes with amps. Now we could, of course, uh, do both, and on most synthesizers you would have that. So you could actually take the uh, envelope uh, from, you can have the filter, the envelope going to the filter, and send that output uh, to, um, here we go, let's try. Instead of sending that output directly out, send it into our amp. Then we can take the amp out. Stop that for now. Um, and we could actually use, let's say we wanted it clocked at the same rate. So we want the amp triggered the same time the filter is being triggered. Uh, let's use... Uh, one of these cables that allows us to mult the signal. We could also just use one of our mult modules. Um, and we're going to send one of those to the trigger for, uh, for the filter. We're going to use the other to trigger uh, a different envelope, um, a different channel of maths, channel 4, for the amp. So we're going to take that output, send that to the control of our amp. So now we've got both an envelope going to the filter and an envelope going to the amp. So if I tighten the amp envelope, it makes it that kind of pingy. Okay, and that's that's the setup that you'd have on most most synths, an ability to control the the envelope of the filter and control the envelope of um, of the amp, and uh, that's just showing um, kind of the architecture underneath the synthesizer of what it is actually doing and recreating that through modular. And the other thing um, that I like to be able to show is that you can use an LFO as a clock source by just using that square wave. And you can send that to trigger any of your modules. And so that's kind of a nice trick. You don't need a dedicated clock module or trigger module like uh, Pamela's workout here. Um, you can just use any LFO, set it to square, and use that uh, to control your gates and to control your um, uh, the tempo. Okay, that's it for this uh, episode. One of the reasons I wanted to make this episode is because uh, this use of using envelopes for filters is what I use uh, for the Goldberg variation videos, and I've got another video that shows my setup in creating those videos, but I wanted to first explain the use of the filters in a more granular way, uh, breaking it down a little bit more so that it makes sense on that video. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you like this video, and, uh, and hit like. Thank you. Bye-bye.